I was born with, in a family of seven children. My father was uh, Jose and Consuelo, were uh, farmers, sugarcane farmers, but very small. We have five hectares of land. And so we consider ourselves poor. We work in the Hacienda in the farm. Uh, I was watching carabaos and all of those. Uh, in fact, the, the uh, carabao in front of the building has a story of itself because I was watching carabaos during uh, summer or during week weekends. And at that time when I fell down from a carabao on the land and I was crying, I said, I'll never be this poor watching stupid carabaos. By the time I was seven or eight years of age, I think I always wanted to be a doctor, <laughs> even at that time. When Dr. Montoya from DOS asked me, Dr. Castillo, can we develop, can we, because he knows I, I'm interested in research and development, can we do something for Filipinos? Then the thing that comes to my mind right away is the NIST system. For two reasons. One, it's very expensive in the Philippines, and we will try, try and see how can we solve the problem. And second, there are not enough orthopedic surgeons in the Philippines who can do it. Half of them, I train them in the States, but in a population of 103 million, you need a lot of orthopedic surgeons to know how to do this system. Through a meeting with Dr. Ramon Gustilo, who's a world-famous orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Ramon Gustilo is a U.S.-based Filipino orthopedic surgeon who has done a lot in the area of orthopedic medicine. And one of his uh, milestone achievements is actually the development of uh, implants, which are now currently patented and being used in the US. But this time he wanted to develop a knee implant that is for the Filipino. And he actually approached us with this uh, concept and uh, development initiative that they, he would like to develop a knee implant for Filipinos because he knew that currently there is no available knee implant in the Philippines that was actually manufactured in the Philippines. Not to mention the exorbitant cost of having a knee implant which cost about almost a million pesos all in all including the surgical fee. So when we discussed that and we saw the prospects of this not just being helpful to the Filipino people in terms of uh, people who would need the knee implant, but as far as his commercial viability, we decided to partner with him. And the interesting thing with this uh, partnership is that the, the government will be investing in the research and development process that will improve on this knee implant. And I, I am very proud to say that this is the first time that it happened that the government is co-investing with a private company in the research and development field. So uh, we took a lot of risk for this particular knee implant. We had a lot of discussions before it was actually approved by the, our governing council. But more importantly, I think, it was the support of Secretary Mario Monteo which made this possible. Because if he was not enthusiastic about the whole project, this would not have been um, as fast as uh, now. So we're truly happy for his support and he gave us the go signal. And after, what, almost two years, we're now with this knee implant that is now being produced. Uh, in the plant of uh, Dr. Gustilo in Cabuyao, and they are now looking at imports, in, uh, exports, sorry, exports to other countries. And to me, that is Philippine technology developed by Filipino scientists, and it's a, he has a very good uh, core of engineers uh, who is his team, support team in the development of this uh, 
knee implant. So he, this company is Orthopedic International and they're very competent uh, engineers and orthopedic doctors who made this possible. So we're truly proud of it. And it will really bring down the cost of uh, knee implants by 50%, 40 to 50%. So which will be of great benefit to many Filipinos who are not able to get implants because of the exorbitant cost. Do you know that there are about 70,000 patients who require knee replacement every year? 70,000. But because it's so expensive, we can only do like a thousand a year. This is 69,000. Magtiti is na lang yun. Nag-start ang akong tuhod sa kit. 1983. <laughs> Kabudlay gid. Magtinda ko doon. Hindi, hindi ko katay. Hindi ko katindog. Dali. Hindi ko pabilis. Hinay lang. Hinay na yun. Ano pa? Manukad pa ko. <laughs> Mabuylo pa. Kabudlay gid. Sa ako, hindi ka... Hindi ko kagiho. Kaayo. Limitado gid akong giho. Kapin pa kung wag ano ng atritis. Katinda lang kayo. Ang misis ko naman ang ano. Nagatinda na. So wala pa siya na operahan. Budlay gid kaayo sa iya-iya nga panggiho, hindi siya kalakat maayo. Gasakripisyo sa ah, gas, gasakit ang iya nga mga tuhod nga eh, hindi agid makaya. Jenna is a late 4 year old. He has a problem for the last 12 15 years. She has not been walking too much. She's primarily in the chair and stand up and walk. Uh, she has knees that are very deformed. It's not osteoarthritis. Probably it's even be either gout or rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, his knees are going uh, outward because we use our knees for the, the whole our whole lives. We have wear and tear of the knees. When you walk, when you and I walk, our weight is bare from the center of the hip joint, the center of the knee, and the center of the ankle. As we age, the the wear exceeds the repair of the knee. Mm -hmm. The problem with the uh, arthritis of the knee, the wearing away, it's a permanent thing. Eh? When the cartilage disappears, no amount of medicine or injections will permanently cure him. So it's really uh, restricted his quality of life for the next 10 or 12 years. Uh, this is, that's not money to be uh, done. First place, in order to answer that problem, you have to know, at least in medicine, you have to know what the problem is. Like, for instance, a broken bone now. If you break your bone, your thigh bone or leg bone, it takes four to six months to heal. Okay? How about if we develop something that we did would heal in six weeks? See, that's innovation. That changes the life of the patient. The new system that we develop is the same way. So, when, I, when Dr. Montoya and I approached, I said, we have to solve the problems of total knee replacement, alignment, and how to make it uh, affordable, quality preserved, and yet affordable. And I think we addressed both those problems. DOST with PCHRD will help uh, Dr. Gustilo, so they put in some money, Dr. Gustilo put in money, and together we built up the research, and the research became production and manufacturing. Now we're using it clinically. Axis knee 
is a uh, hardware actually it's an implant an implant to replace damaged parts it is designed to replace a worn out knee this is the human knee knee cap thigh bone leg bone and the knee moves like that at the end of the bone is cartilage this is the blue thing the tips oh, both of them have cartilages cartilage is tough it does not have any sensation so when we move when we walk it's like a good padding as you age this padding wears away it becomes thin eventually it disappears when this disappears it will be bone on bone and when we walk on bone on bone sa, sa Tagalog yun buto sa buto masakit yun that's very painful there is no medicine that you can take to replace this like a broken brake pad worn out you cannot put oil to make it better you have to replace it axis knee is a way of replacing this worn out pad and essentially the, the procedure cuts the the end part of our joint that is damaged that means the cartilage that's worn out you cut them off and replace it with metal and plastic in a correct alignment and correct stability what we call ligament stability the worn out cartilage you just have to shape it off once you shape it off the axis knee or, or implants like that you put bone cement and you stick it in the bone at the end the tip or the end of this bone will have metal the end of this bone will have it's a special kind of uh, plastic and together when you move there will not be any bone on bone contact so the patient can walk without pain longevity of knee system if properly done it should last 25 to 30 years easy because the plastic wear is wear plastic it's you only wear one share zero two millimeter per year so it lasts for a long time we calculate that the thickness of the plastic it can easily last for many years and we have several patients some here and some in the states that are now 25 years because they are well aligned they still function to do a knee in the states it at least thirty thousand dollars per knee here we can do it for five to six thousand easily and that covers everything covers the implant covers the professional fees covers the hospital uh, for indigent <laughs> but for indigent patients now where we try to work for really indigent patients we just keep it there. you know i can't tell you frankly how he heard of us but all of a sudden he just showed up on the clinic and uh, with his knees and it's from so i don't know how he came to us so he's the first access knee system that we have done both knees one at a time. Maybe they Takut, <laughs> wala mong ipatulong at tama lang po galantaw mo lang po sa inyo ang pirahan ko tapos nung mga 
Dulu gitu guys, lu pira dulu tu aus, tu tri aus. He didn't, we didn't charge him. I didn't charge him professionally. It's all free. The only thing that we charge because the government requires a young implant. The implant is half the price. You know, he has failed health, so it it uh, it uh, pays for his uh, no, hospital bill. So after operation, they na kana na confine ako sa kwan sa ang yano sa kundro. Gin ano na ko gin pangkaaga. Gin nag nag nagtayo na ko. Nagamit ako na walker. Nagwalker ko mga dali man lang walker. Yes, there's sure you can walk. You can stand right away. You know, because the, we put something in there that controls the pain for the next 48 hours. But the the amazing the difference amazing with the bilateral knee last week, the following day she was already standing and we did both knees. Tanan ang ang tanan ko makakapasyal na ko. Kalakan na ko malayo pa, katindog na ko, magkatayo na ko lang madali. Kalakad maka May nakita ko ano, liho. Hindi ako nabudlay yan. Ang kalipay, hindi maabot sa langit. Nga nakabalik sa sang lakat ng insakto. Amo lang na agit akong mahambal. Baragit nga kalipay, nga na insakto ang kwa ni Ronald. Nga abi ko ano, hindi nagit na balik ang iyang paglakat. Karon okay na okay, nagit na siya. Everybody has to be served. You know, irrespective whether they can afford it or, you know, you just have to do it. Ang ang kalipay hindi gin maano, hindi gin ma, hindi ko gin mahambal kay tungod nga. Why hindi na kami nagkuan, hindi na siya nagproblema nga kung gabi hindi na mahasul yung pagtulog, insakto na yung pagtulog kag pangiyo at lao at lao ng pagpangita sa am pang at at lao at lao nga pangabuhi. I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to come to an agreement with the Food and Drug Administration. That's one. For this knee implant specifically, the training program is also being accelerated uh, because of our uh, talks and seminars with a lot of orthopedic surgeons. More and more of them are actually being trained on this particular procedure and implant. So as more and more doctors are using it, more and more patients will be using it and eventually what we would like to happen is that uh, it will be the standard as far as knee implants are concerned in the country. So we're aiming for that. God, money will just come in the backside. Of it. You know, just be a good doctor. You know, to me, that's the most rewarding part of medicine.